we're talking about certainty, but I want you to go back and be as transparent as you can be because I do think naming these things is helpful for people. There's mm-hmm. something about naming them mm-hmm. that brings them out of the shame. Mm-hmm. We can do that because Jesus shamed shame on the cross. Mm-hmm. Um, talk about what uncertainty looks like. Talk about the mm. all of a sudden the massive uncertain world of miscarriage mm-hmm. for you and what does that struggle look like? Mm. Mm. I think there's so many areas where that certainty, that uncertainty can come in. Um, we had three pregnancies without any real complication and live births before we ever had our first miscarriage. And then we had a miscarriage very early and then had our fourth child. And then we had two miscarriages in a, in a row. And there was the the uncertainty of, will we have another child? We wanted another child. Will we, will we have that one? There's, there's uncertainty about future children. There's uncertainty about how, how you will be greeted and thought about when you walk into church the next time after a public miscarriage. Um, particularly as a father, uh, the, when we'd walk into the church, most, you know, women would surround Jenny, um, and her fear was, she said, I'm afraid to go back to church because I'm afraid that everyone will come talk to me about the miscarriage, and I'm afraid that no one will. Yeah. (laughs) Simultaneously. And, I had one man, I think, that I can remember hugging me. Most of the men asked if they, if they mentioned the miscarriage at all, because men don't talk about this. They would ask about how Jenny's doing. And so there's the uncertainty of, can, can I talk about my own grief and my own sorrow in that? Is that acceptable? What will these guys think of me? What do they think of me? And there was the uncertainty of, where am I at with God? I, there was an instance where in one of the miscarriages, we went, I went with Jenny to her doctor to confirm. Well, the miscarriage had been confirmed, but we had to go back for a, a, a DNC, a medical procedure to remove the baby and uh, the other tissues associated with pregnancy from her. And the doctor invited me, and and by this point, we've had four children, and I've watched all these births, and I've looked with the doctor at the placenta. I'm not not a queasy guy. And he said, well, if you want to come sit up by Jenny and hold her hand, you're welcome to. And for some reason, I just wasn't feeling right and said, no no thanks. And I sat in the back of the room, and as he was getting started, I, I was beginning to feel dizzy and, and not right. And, and in my mind, I'm thinking, boy, I, I don't, I've never passed out, but if I did, that would, he's performing a delicate operation and I don't want to be a distraction. And, and so I, I, I said, you know, I, I think I need to leave. And so he said, that's fine. I said, Jenny, I'll be, I'll be in the, the waiting room. And I went out into the waiting room and found a seat in an area that was totally by myself because you don't want anybody in that office, you know, any patient, you know, anyone, another man in the waiting room asking you, what are you going to have? <laughs> and so I was seated by myself and I would say Satan sat down next to me and he was like, you, you call yourself a man? What, what kind of a biblical manhood is this? You're supposed to be the protector and the provider for your wife, the leader. You're supposed to be the one that's there with her and suffering. Yeah, you can't even handle staying in the room. You can't stay in the room. You, you left your wife by herself as she's crying and having this procedure done she didn't want to have done. And I just felt like, is, is Jesus sitting here with me? Did, you know, how does God feel about 
me in this moment. I'm a total and complete failure. Jesus never leaves me or forsakes me. How could you leave your wife in that room? Those are the, you have all those uncertainties and so many more. It's, yeah, anger. Yeah, yeah. Anger, shame was so huge for me. Um, you're a pastor. And just like all this pride we're talking about, you're supposed to have it all together. You're supposed to face suffering with this unswerving confidence in the sovereignty of God. And say... You're supposed to go back and say, well, thank you for your sympathy, but you know, God is sovereign and he's working all things together for my good. And you're not supposed to be a mess. 